trees in the early phase of commercial logging in the southeastern United States were felled with axes prior to the introduction to the crosscut saw. These logs were then moved to waterways with big wheels pulled by livestock and floated to sawmill holding ponds where they were stored until they could be processed into beams, lumber, and other wood products for the U.S. and world market. Logs that were lost in these rivers, lakes, and canals on their journey to the sawmill holding ponds are the ones we now call deadheads. As the distance from the logs fell site to the waterways became too great for this style logging, rail trams were built throughout the forest and logs were loaded directly onto trains with ropes, ramps, and animals, eliminating the loss of logs known as sinkers or deadheads. Once the rail tram system was in place, logs not harvested earlier near rivers with low banks unsuitable for construction of sawmills could now be floated downstream, hoisted out of the river with winches, loaded onto rail cars sitting on trestles over the river and taken to the sawmills creating a second phase of deadheads. When this phase of transporting logs with water was complete, river logging that produced deadheads came to an end forever. With the majority of America's virgin forests moved by rails, combined with the fact early logging records show approximately 90% of the logs moved by water successfully completed their journey to the sawmill, it is obvious deadheads lost in the river were only a small fragment of the actual trees harvested from America's forest. Divers that locate deadheads from me believe at least 70% of the deadheads in their area have already been recovered, and within the next few years, river logging, as a business for them, will definitely come to an end. Their conclusions are based on several factors. Number one, the drastic reduction of available deadheads in the rivers they log. Number two, the high cost of logging permits and geological surveys for the new territories. Number three, long periods of time between favorable diving conditions due to river flooding and dark water. And number four, the rising cost of log recovery will soon force them into other occupations. Two of the divers I purchased logs from did not renew their logging permits this year and have already moved on to more suitable occupations. At the present rate of river logging, it appears to many of these divers the majority of the remaining deadheads in our area will be recovered within the next few years. However, due to the harsh environment that harbors some of these logs, swift dark water, deep sand, and muddy river bottoms, some deadheads being completely covered with debris, a few of these ancient logs will probably never be recovered. Considering these and other factors, I believe it is time we take a realistic look at how few deadheads still remain before they, like the seemingly unlimited forests that produce them, disappear forever. It is my opinion we need to carefully rethink how we use this last, extremely small piece of America's virgin forest we still have and preserve some of it for our future generations to enjoy. Deadheads are the only source of perfectly preserved logs from America's original forest that can be custom sawed for you to create your own one-of-a-kind historical American treasure. Occasionally a log can be located by sight when the rivers are extremely low from drought, but most are located by either bumping for them on the river bottom with a long pole or swimming along the river bottom with scuba equipment feeling for them by hand. As logs are located, they are pulled to the surface by a hand crank or winch and secured to the nose of the boat, then transported to a loading site. We then load the logs onto our trailer using an overhead trolley winch, making it possible for one person to load or unload logs safely by himself. This longleaf pine log recovered in the Suwannee River near the Georgia state line possesses several unique features that indicate it was probably harvested prior to Florida becoming a state in 1821. This tree's growth rings count 29 per inch multiplied by its trunk's radius of 13.6 inches establishes the age of this tree at the time it was harvested to be approaching 400 years. Other things to consider is the fact that this tree had not been turpentined, yet many smaller trees in the same location were not only cut down with crosscut saws, but were turpentined using cat face and cups, which followed the early chop box method seen on many of the older ax cut trees in this area. Given all these indicators and my personal observation that most of the large axe cut trees that have recovered similar to this one were also found near the Georgia state line, makes me believe this tree was harvested in the late 1700s or early 1800s. We have an inventory of logs that we can custom cut to your specifications producing perfectly matched butterfly boards like the two bottom boards shown here. For additional information on deadheads and America's earliest woodsmen, watch the early logging segment on our site.